Tonight we're going to uh, we're continuing on our uh, cults, uh, false religions, and false churches uh, series that we've been going to. So far, so far we've went through uh, Mormons and we went through Islam, and tonight we're going to go into one that most people don't uh, seem to talk about, which is Scientology. Scientology, or as they call themselves, you know, Christian scientists or Christian science. They'll say, you'll you'll have places around you know that are called like the reading room of Christian science, or like these different places to go. And it's completely a, a man-made religion, and we'll see that tonight. But it's a very popular cult. It is a cult um, with that. And it's actually you know, one of the ones that is, you'll see a lot of Hollywood celebrities promoting this. One of the big, you know, famous faces of Scientology is Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is a big Scientologist, um, you know, that goes on there. There was one, I believe, was it Leah Remy that was in that, but then got out of it. And uh, she told her story, and then after she got out, you know, she told her story, uh, started telling her story, she got basically uh, bullied by a lot of them saying, what, you know, like telling her to stop, that they're going to do stuff to her, and all this other kind of stuff. And uh, so it's a uh, it's very, very, it, and definitely man-made, you know, and definitely man-focused as far as the male gender, because you'll, you'll see, you know, that, that there's a lot of things that women aren't lo- allowed to do, but obviously... They welcome them. But the reason why it's so appealing is because you're going to see that it's based on what man thinks that they should do in order to go where they think that they should go. And so Scientology you know, claims to deal with the human spirit and its relationship to the universe and its creator. It teaches uh, that the fundamental laws of life, when applied, help people achieve a happier and more fulfilling existence just as surely as the apple falls to the ground when it's dropped. So they'll sit there and, you know, that's one of the big things is, is, is that they say that if you apply these laws of life, your life, you'll have a happier and more fulfilling existence if you just do these things. It contains, you know, numerous workable methods and techniques to tackle the, uh, the most serious social problems of our age. Doesn't it sound like a wonderful thing? Scientology is uh, something one does. It is not a system of beliefs one is asked to hold. So it's what man does that puts them in good standing, not necessarily through a a certain set of beliefs that is that they're asked to hold. Like the Bible says, you know, thou should not kill, thou should you know, not commit adultery, those kind of things. And the main point of Scientology is the human spirit, its salvation and rehabilitation. It teaches that an individual is a spirit, not a body, not a, not a brain or a gathering, uh, or a gathering of genes and, and chemicals. It's, it's a spirit. And it's, uh, it's the recognition of the, nature of the nature of an individual that forms the foundation of Scientology. They believe that everyone within themselves has great potential of potential to create one's own life. They directly address an individual's spiritual uh, nature with answers to the age-old questions. I mean, who does not have these questions? Who am I? What do I consist of? Where do I come from? Where am I going? They believe the, the spiritual enlightenment leads, uh, leads to a personal understanding of oneself, other, you know, to oneself, others, and one's relationship to the universe, all of which we can uh, find the answers to, uh, to uh, obviously, right at the beginning of Genesis. And I'm going to read a portion of Genesis, and it basically just blows Scientology out of the water. Because we know that we are made in God's, Im- uh, in God's uh, sorry, that we are God's creation, made in His image to perform good works for His service. That's what we're made for. This is what, and this is uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 26 will completely blow this out of the water. You know, this thought, you know, just in, the, in my introduction of uh, Scientology, it'll take care of the entire thing because Scientology is all about us. That's what, that's what that teaches. It's all about man. It's not about God. It's not about anything else. It's all about what you can do, okay? But we see this in verse 26 of chapter 1 of Genesis. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our own likeness, and let them have dominion over the flesh of the or fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, or, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, that uh, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in His own image, 
In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so we see right there, God created everything, God created man, God created uh, everything that we do is created by God. This world, everything is created by God. But they would teach you that it's not. So th this is the, where they currently stand. This is their status that they have. And this is, you know, a few years old. So it, it is possibly that it has grown. But um, I know like in the early 2000s, like, you know, around 2007, 2008, right around there, it started hitting its height because it was, you know, everybody was looking towards it. But I remember seeing commercials, um, and we'll see the creator, but I remember seeing the commercials for this book that is at the center of Scientology. But their current status, uh, as they have, is that they are now, uh, you know, that they are over 7,300 Scientology groups, missions, and churches in 163 countries around the world. So it's not a small cult. It's, it's spread, you know, quite a bit, like gangrene or, uh, you know, a cancer. They have over 87,000 volunteer ministers. 87,000. So their history, Scientology was, de uh, uh, you know, in their history, Scientology was developed by the author L. Ron Hubbard. If you guys, you know, ever seen that name, L. Ron Hubbard, you're, you, you'll begin to figure this out. I remember seeing commercials for this. I remember, remember it was being walled in books, and they always talked about the fact of L. Ron Hubbard, and get this book, it was called Dianetics. And you know, and it was, I, I remember seeing it on TV all the time, like a commercial saying, hey, go pick this up, go pick this up. And I always wondered what it was about, but I just remember they were talking about diag uh, you know, Dianetics, and it always had, it had those questions that were being asked, where do I come from, where am I going, all that, and that's how they got people to, to come on in. But it was, it was L. Ron Hubbard's lifelong passion to assist to achieve a higher plane of civilization and existence. You can kind of see, like, even just from that statement of where he's going. There's a, you know, it seems like there's a lot of probably, like, Eastern mysticism, you know, trying to get that to that higher plane, that higher existence um, that we're going to see. And, now, you know, the thing is that this came from the fact that, that he was a well-traveled man. He started, he started traveling, you know, kind of like around the world when he was in his younger years, like when he was a youth. It was during his travels in Asia that he viewed the misery of the, of the people and wanted to know why and what man is anyway. He wanted to know those questions. You know, why is this happening? Why, you know, why does this, you know, this all go on? From that point on, he gave himself to the study of the nature of man and made it his life's work. So when he saw all the injustice going on there, of how people were and how humanity was, you know, was suffering and all these other things, he made it his life's goal to figure out human nature. He doesn't look to the Bible, but he sets out to figure out human nature. So in 1938, I didn't realize, I thought this was, I thought L. Ron Hubbard was a new, you know, like he was a more modern, you know, contemporary person than this. I didn't realize that he was, it actually went back into the 30s and, and all that. But he gave his first unpublished uh, manuscript, Excalibur, which he claimed to have discovered the common denominator of our existence. So you read the name Excalibur, automatically I think of the, you know, of, uh, Sir Lancelot and, and the kings of the, you know, the Knights of the Round Table. But this is that not about that. He's, he's talking about that he discovered the common denominator of our existence. He claimed that it is a matter of survival and life was composed of two things, the material universe and number two, X factors. X factors, which he never fully expounded you know, upon. So he talks about that there's these X factors that, you know, that life is, you know, that that life is about a matter of survival and it was composed of those, those two things, the material universe and X factors, which he never fully completes. His first major work was in 1950, a book called Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health. Now, can you f see how this would possibly get people uh, lured in? I mean, what's the biggest thing, you know, in 2024, what is one of the biggest things that you always hear about on TV? Mental health. Mental health. Everything is mental health nowadays. 
Personally, I believe that a lot, I'm not saying that all mental health, but I think a lot of the mental health is demonic. But they don't want to call it demonic. They don't want to you know, acknowledge the fact of demons, but they just say, oh, it's a mental health. It's a mental illness. It's a mental illness, uh, illness issue. Like I said, I'm not saying all of it is, but I'm saying the vast, I think the vast majority of it is mental, uh, Ill, uh, of mental illness is demonic, and they cover it up with a pill. That's the way, you know, that's, I mean, that's what happens because basically, you know, like if they have something that happens in their life, and it's like, oh, I, I got to go to the doctor, and they'll give me a pill. But, you know, so there's, this, this methodology is designed to help alleviate such things as unwanted sensations and emotions, irrational fears, and psycho, uh, psycho, uh, psychomatic, psycho schematic, sorry, uh, illnesses. So this whole mental health thing is obviously, you know, so anything that you, you know, those unwanted sensations that you have, he's like, I don't want those. It's going to take care of it. That's what this book you know, says it's going to do. It's going to take care of those unwanted emotions that you have. I don't want to feel anger. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to have fear. You know, that's what I talk about, irrational fears. And then, you know, these, these illnesses, these mental illnesses. In 1951, after seeing the popularity of his book, so it, it was very popular, Hubbard concluded that an individual was uh, neither his body nor his mind, but rather an immoral spiritual being. So it's all about the spirit. This thing right here, nothing. You know, it's just all about the spirit. But that's an immoral spiritual being that's not about the body, it's not about the mind. And this became obviously the true beginning of Scientology. So I don't know if he, he first, I mean, he talks about, you know, uh, the common denominator of all existence. But I don't think he was, I don't know if he was, you know, planning on starting a religion or a cult. Because that's the way, uh, you know, a lot of the cults, you know, start is the person has an idea, has a thought, and then they run with it. So, you know, it, it may not be, they're like, I think I'm going to, uh, I think today I'm going to start a cult. I don't think it starts that way. Most of the time it starts off with this idea. And like I said, he never is, you know, as far as I've seen or have read and know, he never consults the Bible. Or if he does, it's very, very minimal just for his own agenda. So he goes, like I said, because he goes over to all these Asian, uh, Asian areas. And there's a lot of, obviously, Eastern mysticism, a lot of, you know, cult activity and different things that they have over that way and so that's where he kind of comes up with a lot of his ideas and this became obviously you know like i said this you know the, you know the fact of that whole thing of that there's not a body or a mind but that there were an immoral spiritual being that was the true beginning of scientology as uh, as hubbard moved from being an author because he was just an author he had these ideas to now claiming to be a religion in the realm of the human soul so he went from being an author that found these things, and now all of a sudden, he's like, I'm not an author. This is a religion. It's cl he's claiming that a religion, but it's a cult. Scientology is a, is a very wide in scope. I mean, there's, there are scores of book, books that are over 15,000 pages of technical writings and more than 3,000 taped lectures. So when you go to the reading room of, Scientology, or, or of Christian science, this is what you're going to find. You're going to find those 15,000 pages of, of those writings and those 3,000 tape lectures because they, this is what they want you to know. They have it all there for you. And so that way you can you know, watch them, you can listen to them, you can read and all that kind of stuff. So, and basically these books and lectures are considered to be scripture to a member of the Church of Scientology. This is their scripture. Those 15,000 pages of writing and those 3,000 uh, taped uh, lectures, that's their Bible. That's their, that's their scripture. doesn't matter if it lines up. That's, their, that, that's what they're going with. So what are some of their beliefs? Because a lot of people don't necessarily know, you know about all their you know, beliefs and stuff like that. Um, the, the word Scientology means the study of knowledge or truth. The study of knowledge or truth. Scientology hold that man is basically good and not evil. Okay? It teaches that it is their experiences that cause people to commit evil deeds. Remember, it's not your nature. It's what you go through that make you do these things. 
it is not their, you know, like I said, it's not their basic nature to do so. That their basic, you know, like I said, that they're basically good. But it's what you go through that causes evil. You know, it causes you to do evil. That's what they would say. To them, people can mistakenly solve their problems by thinking only of their own personal interests and overlook or ignore how they affect others. So it's whatever is good for me, I don't care about you. That's, that's, that's Scientology in a nutshell. If this betters my life, I don't care how it affects you. That almost sounds like bad business practice, doesn't it? But this is their religion. It's the fact of if it helps me, it benefits me, don't care about you, as long as I'm enriched, whatever. You, you just do your own thing. It's kind of like a weird take on evolution. It's kind of like survival of the fittest, but a little bit more nutty. Let's just put it that way. And you think that evolution is nutty. You, I digress. I'm going to go on a little bit further. You'll see as far as their stuff. But like I say, it's their own personal interest. That, you know, like I said, in the over, uh, overlook or ignore how it affects others. They believe that they are not uh, that they are not to try to help others solve their problems, but rather increase their ability and intelligence so they can improve themselves. So I said, Barry, it's all about me. That's 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 probably should be their bumper sticker. It's all about me. I mean, that's. That's what it comes down to. It's not until after a person has taken care of self that they can start to reach out to others. So you got to take care of you got. I got to take care of me before I can take care of others. This is also this idea. This ideology has come into the church. How many people don't you know go knocking doors or witnessing or whatever because of the fact of I have to get my life straight first. I don't want to be a hypocrite. You ever hear that? I don't want to be a hypocrite. I can't tell somebody about Jesus. I can't invite them to church. I can't do that because I have to get my life straight. That's the same thing that, that this is teaching. But I'm not supposed to be into, you know, comparing this to Christianity. I'm just, right now I'm just giving you the belief. So let's go back into, uh, you know, into that. According to Scientology, like I said, the individual is not a body but just a spirit. Since there uh, have been so many different concepts of the term soul throughout the ages hubbard came up with his own how convenient i mean that's what everybody does they they take a word i mean how many times have we heard a word that we've used for well say centuries because the english language has been around for centuries and people have changed what the word means for instance on the last 60 50 60 years i mean the word gay used to mean what happy joyous now it means that stuff so they they want to change uh, they like to change words and so like i said l ron hubbard he changes this word and so he he chose you know a, he went from one greek word to the other because he he wants to obviously change it like he's actually changing greek words to help himself here and so he and i'm going to butcher the way that this is pronounced but uh, thetan, he, he, he chooses the term thetan instead of theta, which is a symbol for thought and life. Because remember, it's all about you. They believe that the, th- uh, the, the thetan is the person himself, not his body, his name, or anything else. So it's all about that. Like I said, very, and like I said, I can keep going on about the, you know, I keep going on. The identity is what? The individual. You're going to say, Pastor. What are you trying to get to? It sounds like everything's, because that's what I want you to you know, see is everything is about them. Hubbard teaches that the spirit, the Thetan, ha, uh, has the ability to leave the body and exist independent of the flesh, which they call uh, exter- uh, exteriorization, exteriorization. So your body, you know, your, you know, that spirit can leave the body and exist independent of the flesh. Your, your spirit does not need this, according to them, okay? In this state, that they believe that, they can, uh, that the individual can see with, uh, with the body's eyes. This is, like I said, I told you it's getting out there. It's going to get out there. That, that, that they can see uh, without the body's eyes that 
um, and they can see, uh, sorry, they can hear without the body's ears and feel without the body's hands. Just, yeah. With this act of exterior, uh, exteriorization, attainable in Scientology, the individual gains the certainty that he is himself an immortal spiritual being and not a body. Sounds like, you know, what they, you know, like you see, like with, uh, you know, people in yoga and all that kind of stuff. They try to get that higher plane. They try to, you know, center themselves. And I believe I had a friend of mine that actually went to a Christian science thing, and that's what they do. They try to find their center, and which obviously they're at the center of it. But they try to do, and it's a really, a lot of repetition, I believe, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they had, went, they had went to college, and you know, it was a Christian college that they had went to, but one of their class requirements, for the, you know, I believe it was about cults and stuff, that they had to go visit a cult, which I don't, yeah, I don't say go visit a cult, so I don't know why they would have them do that, but they said while they're in there, there were people in the room, and they had a big screen on there, and he said you would hear people say, I found the floor, I find the floor, I found the floor, I found the floor, I found the, and then, you know, uh, you know, I found the chair. I found the chair because they're sitting down in a chair. I, f- I feel the chair. I, you know, I'm in the chair. And they said, all of a sudden, out of the middle of nowhere, somebody goes, "I'm in the center of the universe." And this was like their, the greatest achievement for. I mean, just they were excited about that. Just a lot of yeah, weirdness goes on. You know, and you'll see even more that comes on here. The the Scientologists use of con- uh, uses a. Uh, Concepts to better understand life. So this is what they feel like they have to do in order to understand life. One of the concepts is the eight dynamics of existence. A dynamic is an urge, drive, or impulse toward survival. Now, these are their definitions, just so you know. So you say, Pastor, that's not what... These are their definitions. They change words and the meanings. With an understanding of dynamics, a person gains insight and can bring all aspects of his life into alignment. That's why when that person said they're in the center of the universe, because everything finally aligned into where they, they, you know, they found themselves in the center of the universe. Literally, themselves are the center of the universe. All right, the first dynamic is the urge to survive as oneself. The urge to survive as oneself. The second is to survive through family, sex, and the rearing of children. The third dynamic is the urge to survive in groups, small and large, a company, a group of friends, a city, or a nation. The fourth is the urge to survive as mankind. You say, Pastor, these sound weird. They are. They're all weird. The fourth, I'm sorry, the fifth Sixth, seventh, and eighth are the urges to survive through other form, life forms such as animals, plants, the physical universe, the spiritual universe, and infinity. So Buzz Lightyear had it right, to infinity and beyond. Scientology teaches that by simply delineating these dynamics, it clarifies and brings order into existence. Once, uh, once you observe these dynamics in one's own life, not, uh, not which need improvement, and through the use of science, uh, Scientology's principles, it uh, brings these factors into greater harmony. That's the whole thing of bringing everything together. It's got to be the center of the universe, like I said. So this is, it's, like I said, it's very Eastern mysticism, like a lot of transcendentalism. Is that, I believe that's, you know, a lot of, like, that kind of stuff, like, when I say out there, literally out there kind of stuff. So what are some of the practices? Number four, what is the you know, practices? I've been going through you know, the, you know, the, uh, the beginning parts of it, the history, and some of the, you know, some of the beliefs. Now uh, let's look at the practices. The main practice of Scientology is spiritual counseling called auditing. Called auditing. According to the, I mean, I, yeah. I just shake my head as I, as I go through my notes. I mean, it's just strange beyond belief. Did you think that Scientology was this weird? I thought it was weird, but when I you know, started doing research and you know, all that kind of stuff, 
it hit a whole nother level. Let's just put it that way. It is seen as a form of personal uh, count. Uh, yeah, it, uh, this auditing is seen as a form of uh, personal counseling intended to help an individual look at his own existence and improve his ability. By viewing one's own existence, they can walk an exact route to a higher state of awareness. Hence the, I found the floor, did you find the floor? I found the floor, I found the floor. I found the chair, I found the chair. You got to have that higher sense because, you know, if you can't find the floor, you can't find the chair, you can't find yourself in the center of the universe. It's got to start somewhere, right? Whew. Auditing is a precious, thoroughly uh, codifying activity with exact procedures. A Scientologist counselor is known as an auditor. They use specific designed uh, meters, e-meter or electro-psychometer, uh, electro which helps locate areas of spiritual, uh, spiritual distress by measuring the mental state of change uh, for the person being audited. You guys going to go to a Christian science reading room now and... And it sounds great on the outside. You're like, oh, Christian science. Oh, that's, I, I want to know what Christians believe about science. That's, yeah. And they use, you know, they use a form of questions to ask the person being audited, which tells them uh, at the end of the, you know, it tells them at the end of the test what exactly they need to work on to improve their condition. So by the time this auditor is done, they'll say, okay, Here's your, your problem areas. This is how you need to change your life. This is how, you know, what you need to do to get you to where you need to be. They really only practice in Scientology is education in the Scientology principles. You, you know, it's, it's the fact of that they're right and everybody else is wrong. They commonly refer to this as Training. That person, you know, that I met that went to one of these, uh, went to this uh, Church of Scientology. After they were in there for, I think they said about 10 minutes, which I told them uh, that was about 10 minutes longer than I would have spent. They said that they had to try and figure out because they had people like watching the doors to make sure you didn't leave. So they finally found an exit and they went out and then they said that they had a hard time that they, they, they just started busting out laughing because they thought I was so ridiculous. But yet you have people that believe that this is true. And the fact that you have like bouncers at the door making sure you don't leave, I mean, that should be some scary stuff for a person to realize. Even if, you, even if you're not saved, you should go, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. Auditing teaches uh, them to see how something happened while uh, training teaches one why. So when the, you know, the, the They'll figure out, hey, this is the problem area. Then they go to the training area to find out why did that happen. People in Scientology believe by using both auditing and training, they, they can raise themselves to, be, to a higher spiritual existence. The end goal is to free themselves from the de uh, dependence on the material universe. Like they don't want to be anything about this world. They're like, I can free myself. It's just, I'm just here. I don't need this stuff around here. But what's really funny is the fact that who this appeals to mostly, as you'll see, most of the biggest advocates are the uh, celebrities in Hollywood. Like I said, you'll see a lot of celebrities that believe this stuff. So number five is this. What's the difference to Christianity? And you go, where do I start? Well, obviously, number one would be the fact of God. Scientology believes that there is a superior, you know, being or a supreme being, but his his ex, uh, the exact nature is determined by each person. So Scientology believes that, right? Believes that there is a supreme being, but you know what? Yours can be a, a fish. Mine can be some sort of bear, or whatever else I come out there. I can say, well, it's Optimus Prime from Transformers. 
That's my, you know, that's who God is to me. I mean, it's like whoever God is to you, that's, what they, that, that's, who, that's who God is. Christians believe, obviously, as Christians, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Creator, and the Lord of everything. That should seem like, well, duh, yes. And if you don't, you know, if you don't want to believe that or whatever, I guess, or you want, you know, you want to do some more research on it, Genesis chapter 1, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, and Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Jesus Christ in Scientology teaches, uh, this is Scientology teaches that Jesus was a good teacher that learned to be clear of his conscience. So Jesus is in Scientology, but he learned to clear, he's just a person, you know, a good teacher that learned to clear his conscience. That's what everybody wants to get to in Scientology, is to clear their conscience. Christ, uh, Jesus, in, uh, obviously in Christianity, is the second person of the Trinity, the Savior of the world. Clear differences between what Christianity teaches and what Scientology teaches. So what about humanity? Scientology believes that each person is immortal, divine soul, and basically good in three parts, soul, mind, and body. Christians believe that humanity is the creation of God, and create a uh, that humanity is, sorry, yeah, humanity is the creation of God and uh, created in God's own image with each person being unique and precious to God. We saw this in, the, in what we just read you know, earlier in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, that, that obviously that humanity was a creation of God, that God said, let us make man in our image, right? And that you know, obviously, you know, like I said, we're created in his image with each person being unique. Nobody's the same. Right? We're all, you know, different people. I mean, Doug and I are different. Rose says, amen. And, there are, and every single person is considered precious to God. So let's go on to the next area, which is the basic problem of humanity. So what do these two believe is the basic problem with humanity? Scientology teaches that the problem of humanity is Ingram's. Ingrams are learned behavior or conflicts from one's past, which prevent the individual from recognizing their own divinity. Did you catch that last part? Which prevent individuals from recognizing their own divinity. You see a lot of these cults, false religions, all, you know, some way, you know, want to be in control or they make themselves to be God. Christians sin by their own free will. That's what we believe the basic, uh, basic problem of humanity is, is that si uh, Christians sin by their own free will. That's the problem, right? Genesis chapter 3 and Romans 3.23 talk about that. I'll give you the verses on these so that way if you ever run into one, you can actually sit there and say, all right, let's go through some things here real quick. If you can get them this far to actually talk to them about these things. So what's the solution to the problem? You know, well, they say, what do Scientologists believe? Here's the solution. They believe through auditing and training, one can become clear of their ingrams, remember their past, you know, all that bad stuff that they did, that learned behavior, and attain full human potential and become fully aware of personal divinity. Christians believe that salvation through the confession of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is the only way to be forgiven of our sin. It is grace through faith that we are saved, right? That is the only way, that is the solution to that whole sin problem, you know, that we do free, you know, you know in our own free will. Does the Scientologist believe in life after death? They believe in a cycle of reincarnation of the soul until attain, uh, it attains the state of spiritual awareness and liberation from matter, energy, space, and time. <laughs> Christians uh, believe that, you know, life after death, that there's the, the eternal communion with God, or, you know, that we go to heaven or we go to hell, that there's, each, or, you know, the fact that there's, like I say, eternal communion with God or eternal separation 
uh, you know, that there's hell. So heaven and hell. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and Revelation chapters 20 through 22 tell us that there's what, you know, that there's either heaven or hell for, you know, for the believer. Or sorry, for the believer or non-believer. So, I finished a little ahead of time, so. But I'm guessing that, you know, for most of this you go, how could a person be so deceived? Well, if a person doesn't, if they're not a, not a believer, and they already believe in some sort of Eastern mysticism like yoga, you, you know, all this other kind of stuff, in which there are a lot of Christians that are going, oh, I, pray, I, I like yoga because, you know, it's first stretching. You can stretch your body without summoning demons. And, you know, I've heard people say, you know, Christians come out and say, well, you know, I, I do it for the stretching. I don't do that or whatever. But here's the problem, you know, as far as with yoga, and this kind of goes, this goes with Scientology and the finding that higher plane, is that when they do the whole, like, crossing of the legs with their hands like this and they're going like whatever, and they, they actually are, you know, saying om, that is actually like you're conjuring you know, spirits, you're conjuring demons because of the fact that you want to have a clear conscience. Because what does yoga teach, which is meditation, and it's the clearing of one's mind and what you just read about, that's what L. Ron Hubbard was teaching. But his is a religion, whereas other people say, well, this is just a practice that I do just to clear my mind. The Bible talks about meditating upon God's word. So what does that mean? That you're filling your mind with God's word. And you take away all the distractions and everything else. They're trying to get rid of the distractions and get rid of everything. They're emptying oneself, which if you read the Bible, the Bible says that, you know what, that if a demon comes back and the house is cleaned, he's going to invite seven more just like him. So you have Christians that do, and you say, well, does that affect a Christian? No, I don't, you know, I don't believe, you know, the, I believe the Bible teaches that Christians cannot be possessed by a demon. They can't be possessed. There's no, if you're, say, if you're truly, uh, if you're saved, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no way possible you can ever be possessed by a demon. That's what the Bible teaches. You can be oppressed, meaning that you have, you know, a, a tormentor that will, you know, that can follow you. And so sometimes when people say, well, I have all these problems as a Christian and whatever, then you start finding out that they're doing all this Eastern mysticism and all this other junk. They probably got a little gang of little demons that they're you know, bringing along with them. Why do that? I mean, people, you know, they talk about, well, I like how my mind is free afterwards. It's the same stuff. They want to do yoga. They want to do all this Eastern mysticism. And then they say, well, I like to, you know, uh, how I feel after I stretch. Well, then just stretch. You don't have to follow, I mean, I mean, some of the some of the stretches are weird by name, anyways. Like down dog. There's, I mean, yeah. There's just a whole bunch of them. They're 